This video was brought to you by my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Hello there. So yeah, now I can record on full HD, but that's not of the concern of this video. But I think that I've been using and maybe you've been using the process and all the good old building callbacks in the wrong way, or maybe we didn't realize some problems with the current way that we approach the callbacks. So with callbacks, I mean the ready callback, the process callback, the physics callback. Anyway, uh, all the virtual methods that Godot provides to us. So uh, let's go into an example that I have and let's see what's the problem and how we can work around it. So let's get started. So I am with the combat prototype from Kitchen Tales. If you are not following Kitchen Tales, I recommend you to do because I'm posting a lot of stuff that you can follow on itch.io and you can also follow the development on github, I'll put the link in the description. But uh, here we can see, I will open the jump class and we can see that here we have the physics process and inside the physics process I have a logic that will try to replenish the jump amount that the player has. So, it has a available amount that it decreases here in the apply method so it will try to decrease the amount of available jumps and on the physics process it would check if it can uh, replenish this amount setting it to be uh, the maximum allowed jump let me show you what's the problem with that i will put a very simple print here so we can see something in the output and i will print contact replenish this is the the logic that i'm trying to to make here when the player is in contact with the floor it will replenish the jump amount and now i will extend this class so i would save it and i will extend this class extend script and i will call this one time it replenished jump let's say we want to make a twist in the logic maybe we want the jump to replenish from time to time right so we jump and then two seconds after the first jump, the jump is replenished. Maybe this can be good for, let's say, flat bird uh, logic or something like that. So I will attach this, this time at replenished jump to the jump uh, node here. So we can see that this is the script that it is using. And I will, inside the physics process, add another print. So we'll see what is the, the logic that is currently being, being processed by the physics process. So I will print time it replenish. And if we test the scene now, we can see down here in the output that both prints are being called. So the contact replenish and the time it replenish. And this is because Godot will call the virtual callback from the base class and the virtual callback from the inherited class so it's calling both callbacks and maybe this is not what we want this can cause a lot of bugs imagine that you have three classes stacked so you have a hierarchy of three classes and you have logic inside this method uh, what you can do and this is how i am working around that is that i will open the jump class again and instead i will encapsulate this logic inside method so we can override this method because as you can see we are not overriding the virtual method from godot itself so the virtual callback we're not overriding we are stacking logic on on it so instead we can uh, encapsulate this logic let's say a replenish method and i will create this replenish method here replenish and i will throw this logic inside this method and in the inherited class so in the time of the replenish jump I don't even have to uh, use this physics process. I will just override the parent class replenish method. And here I will just print uh, time it replenish. Time it replenish. If we see now, I will test this again. You can see that now it is calling only the time it replenish method. So it's printing only time it replenish. This is because now that we created a method that we can reliably override, we can have our logic self-contained and we can override or maybe we can call the parent class logic as well. So if you want to do that, we just have to make a super call by adding the dot before the call of the method. 
and with that we will also call the parent class uh, logic as well. So if we play, you can see that we have contact and time it uh, being printed out in our output. So this is my tip because I think that this gives us a lot more control over the logic that we are using in the callbacks. I also have here uh, the platform action bus. I used to have this filter event logic inside the unhandle input, but now I just use this filter event action because I inherited this class to make another class, so for the combat action bus, but that's it. Uh, with that, we give more control to us over what will be called and what will be processed in the actual physics process, because now we can safely override uh, our methods, our logics. So that's it. I hope this helps you build more reliable code. And if you think that this doesn't make any sense, or if you think that maybe something is wrong, or maybe there is another manner to approach this problem, uh, leave a comment below. Let us know how you work around this problem. And if you like it, please let me know by leaving a thumbs up. This will help me a lot knowing that I'm producing something valuable to you. And also, if you want more of this content, please subscribe and turn on the bell. I don't know if this works or not, but I know that less than 10% of my subscribers actually receive or actually watch the content, the new content that I'm producing. So maybe this helps you get more content. So I don't know if YouTube will actually deliver a notification for you, but this helps. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time.